right, <clears throat> headed to work. I made a lengthy video last night, actually two nights ago. I took a night off um, about our glorified bodies in heaven. And the thought come to me quite a bit. I want to add something to that that I forgot. I want to talk about the demeanor, the demeanor of those I met that I knew here on earth and saw them in the afterlife briefly. I think a couple of them were actually lengthier, uh, definitely. I just wasn't allowed to remember it all. I was only allowed to remember the end because I think it would be a total game spoiler if we had all the answers here, right? <laughs> but the, the demeanor of these people was different than how I knew them on earth and so I'm going to add this little clip to that because I want to cover everything on my heart and my mind on the topic I'll start with my friend Brian Hunt who was the first of four such post-mortem visitations um, on earth I mean he was 18 he lived in a garage he was a, a rough and tumble kind of guy rough and tumble. I don't know how else to put it. You know, he wasn't a thug or any, like a tough guy like you got today. He's just a, he was probably prone to swear and tell dirty jokes, but you know, he wasn't swearing with any hatred or malice. He was just trying to be funny, trying to impress. He was a couple of years older than me, kind of looked up to him. That kind of demeanor just boyish stuff, you know. He was definitely, I'm pretty sure, pure of heart. Um, and I know he came to the Lord. Uh, my mom uh, was involved in that, testifying to him. But in heaven, he was very calm. It was definitely him, but he was different. He was very calm, collected. Uh, very, very gentle, loving in his conversation, which really wasn't like him on earth, but he was a, a very much at peace. Peace, love, knowledge, he knew my future. He told me quite a bit of it and it came true. That's how I know again, this, you know, but I didn't understand it at the time and he said I wouldn't um, understand it at the time. But what he said did come true, most all of it. And he said it was all going to work out for me in the end. And to remember that. And he said, Tim, it's going to work out for you. It's all going to work out for you in the end. But in heaven, his demeanor was quite different than as I knew him on earth. Um, he had a lot of heartache on earth. Uh, one of his parents was deceased early. And the other parent wasn't in the picture. So at age 17 or 18, he was living on his own, sleeping in the garage, gas station where he worked. They let him live there. But his demeanor was at peace, gentle. There was no stress, no anxiety, no bravado, nothing in it. But it, you know, a lot of love and personalized, like totally tuned in. Now we go forward to the next one, which was quite a, quite a few years later, decades later, a good 50 years later, and I, well, not quite, about 45 years later, and I experienced a visitation from my mother, which was really wonderful, and she took me on, a, she took me to heaven, and she showed me some things that I don't remember, but I do remember traveling about in this wonderful place heaven with her where she was showing me things but it was like they injected me with uh, something just kind of I don't remember what those were I was allowed to remember the end of the visit which is which I've related here quite a few times and I relate in this video her demeanor was different than I knew her on earth her voice sounded the same and I suppose Brian's did too but it didn't sound the same because it was really markedly contrast to the rough, you know, 
<laughs> the rough guy I knew uh, as a teenager. Rough in a not a bad way. Not a bad way, rough. Just one of the guy I tried to impress his friends, but not not a. He was definitely not a person to do bad things in any way. He was a good person. Um, my mom sounded like her voice was her. It looked like her, definitely, but very young and perfected, like perfection, say age 27 or 30, perfection that you don't get here on earth. You'd have to put a lot of filters, <laughs> like, you don't get that. Um, she seemed quite a bit, really, she was that way here on earth, she, very optimistic full of love, joy, and faith. Uh, not so much peace, because she had a lot of problems, like we all do here. Uh, and I didn't sense, was she my mother? Do those role models still exist? I don't know. She definitely remembered me and loved me. Uh, she seemed a little different, but not in an off way. I would say... Her demeanor was, oh, I'm not sure how to put it in words. At peace, none of the conflicts that we have here. You know, we're like, I think that we as souls and individuals here, I think we are like combat veterans in a war zone with so many things going on here. I don't care who you are. You've got physical problems, emotional problems, relationship problems. We all know that, you know, death is looming in our future, each of us. You've got the devil here working to tempt us. We're in a combat zone here. Even if things are going really good for you and me, we're still in a combat zone. I mean, I was in love once with somebody, you know, I've talked to her, and it still was stressful. She had health problems. I had health problems. It's just all kinds of stuff. People for us, people against us. And each of us, each of us individually, have to deal with some hard things. I tell you, while we're here, I think compared to the people I know and love that I met on the other side, they were at complete peace. They were themselves, but what was missing was all the anxiety, the fear, the stress, the loneliness, all of it, the oppression, the sin, all that has been removed, the worry, at complete peace, that's a difference, if you can imagine taking all of those things out of somebody's life, out of your life, what you would be like at complete peace love and knowledge too they I think they I have reason to believe uh, and I forgot to cover this in that video as well um, that they also uh, as my friend Brian showed me my future and uh, and it came true so they could see our future there's no time there I guess and my mother seemed quite confident to reassure me that our separation only has to be this way just right now just for now those were her words so um my mother seemed in her glory i mean peace joy love complete absence of all the negative things that we go through here to include sin and making mistakes and doubt and all those things, anxiety, all of it's gone. All of it. Physical pain, emotional pain, bad memories, worry, death, the world, politics, race, social problems, everything. We are in a combat zone here. And many of us go about suffering from battle fatigue post-traumatic stress syndrome but we have to be functional with it because there's no let up here 
there's no let up. Even our sleep sometimes is full of bad dreams, waking, even a peaceful sleep, and you're back in the war called life on earth. And I'm not, there are some good things here too, definitely. So there was a difference in their demeanor. Now, Jen, I hate to bring her up here. Um, if somebody hears this, they're offended, let me know. I apologize. I'll take it down. I don't think she was in her glorified state yet. And I'm not here to talk about purgatory or things like that. I don't really know. But she wasn't uh, tormented either or in hell at all. And I'm certain if she was in control of the dark one, uh, he never would have let her come here to tell me she loves me and that I need to move on with my life, to get on with my life. You know, that wouldn't have happened. So I'm confident she's in a good place and she's under God's care. Perhaps she's in her glorified state now. She just, uh, the visitations with her were different than with my mom and Brian who were in heaven. And she was very uh, desperate to tell me she loved me which I really, really am grateful for that. It's kind of rare when they come back to, to do that. She did it, and I got the impression that it was um, not easy. And when she told me she loved me, I had to experience that by seeing her death, that she was laid out on a, on a mortuary table covered in a sheet first. And like with my friend Brian, I had to experience his death. Where It started out where I saw from his vision, his eyes, the car at nighttime as it came towards him with the high beams on. And then suddenly it was off the road in front of him. And that was his, they said he was killed instantly. The guy went off the road, he was drunk. So I had to experience his death as well. I don't know the reason for that, but those are some common things. Um, that I forgot to mention also in the video. I might just remake the video. There's so much to it that I wanted to cover. I don't really think of time limits. Uh, she seemed... She looked fine. I talk about that. She looked just like herself on Earth. The same clothes and such. Um, just... She seemed desperate to get the message out to me. And it was really... All she was able to do was get one sentence out in each of them. Tim, you need to move on with your life now. And Tim, I love you. That's it. And it was, I think it took a great deal of effort. And again, both times with my mother and her, before preceding these visitations, I had hauntings going on, definitely. Um, almost daily, and I, I thought it might have been them because it was right after each of them passed on, I started having pronounced hauntings that I talk about in the video, and I got the impression they were trying to communicate with me, and they weren't able to make it go off. Nope, didn't make it go off. Um, and then they appeared to me in a dream that really was unlike a dream. There is a huge difference between a visitation and a dream. And if you've ever had one of these, you know what I'm talking about. It It's two different things. I mean, definitely. I can't prove it. Nobody can. So, you know, believe whatever you want. That's fine. I don't take any offense to anybody that doesn't. Believe me. But my mother and Brian's demeanor in heaven was it was them it was undeniably their personality and a perfected body that they were in and there was them minus all the stress and things of this earth except they the thing that of this earth that they took with them both of them obviously was their love for me that lives on and it occurred to me that's why we must forgive people while we're here because we can shed all the negative things that we've that have attached to us here you know it's just part of life 
But I think being angry with people on this earth, is that's not a good thing to take with you. I think it's a stain on our souls that we need to remove while we're here and do that through the prayer and suffering and with Jesus Christ as the example and to give us power. So that's very important to forgive people here. And it's not always easy. I still struggle and I pray about it and I struggle. I don't I want to have a spotless soul when I leave here. And I will through Jesus Christ. And my dear friend Jen, she, I think she was still tra attached to the world. And I know when I knew her, when she was with me, that she did not handle death well. When she saw somebody grieving, she would cry. She really was a very tender person. Like I said once, a friend of mine died that she didn't know of. Uh, quite suddenly, a farmer, a good man, a Christian man, uh, passed on quite suddenly in his barn of a heart attack. And she was crying over that. And I said, why are you didn't even know him? And she said, I don't handle death well. I think after she passed on, she must have saw me grieving and heard me grieving hard. And I think before she could move on, hopefully to what God had for her, she felt that she needed to come to me and let me know that she loves me and that she needs that I need to move on to comfort me and to let me know I need to move on and I need to take those good words and couple them with the message my mother left me with on the visitation was that it has to be this way just for now so that goes for her too and we'll see our loved ones again when we're out of this battleground called earth and mortal life when our service here to the Lord has been completed and that's that I don't know if I'm going to that other video is 50 minutes long this will be the longest video I've ever made but I want to make sure I add these things thank you God bless you